up there Kazali, in there and fight. The lyrics are known to every fan of Australian rules football and have been part of the sport since the famous Up There Kazali first appeared as the song behind a VFL advertising campaign in 1979. That famous three-word cry, however, first entered Australian folklore in the 1920s. So just who was Kazali, and why has he been immortalised in Footy's most famous song? Roy Kazali was born in South Melbourne on the 13th of January 1893, the 10th child of James and Elizabeth Jemima. From an early age, he excelled at rowing, cricket and football, demonstrating a keen sporting intelligence and incredible natural athleticism. He began his football career at St Kilda in 1911, possessing a towering leap which he developed by leaping for footballs suspended from his roof. His athleticism allowed him to play in the ruck, despite standing at just 180 centimetres tall. At the Saints, he enjoyed a rather unremarkable career, until winning the best and fairest in 1918, and captaining the team in 1920. Internal troubles then drove him away from St Kilda, and after failing to get a clearance to Carlton, he completed a move to South Melbourne at the end of the 1920 season, where he received the added bonus of earning six pounds a game. Soon, Kazali was dominating for South. Their on-ball combination became known as the Terrible Trio, with Kazali as the Ruckman, Mark Tandy as Rover, and Fred Skeeter Fleeter as the now extinct Ruck Shepherd. It was Fleeter who would coin the famous cry. Kazali praised his teammate as a great player to work with. He fought his way through formidable packs so that I could get a clear run at the ball. He would then inspire Roy to leap for the sky by yelling, up there Kazali. Soon, the cry was taken up by the South Melbourne crowd, who would delight in encouraging him to leap into a ruck contest and belt the ball clear, or fly for spectacular marking attempts. In Roy's words, when I was to go, Fleeter would yell, up there Kazali, and up I'd go. The crowd then began to catch on to the system, and they'd yell the same thing. He won the goal kicking with 19 in his first season at South Melbourne, and earned his first appearance for the Victorian representative team. He would go on to play 13 games for the Big V while at South Melbourne and return to the Lake Oval for a season as playing coach in 1922. Although his marking ability had been noted at St Kilda, it was at the Bloods he truly became regarded as the greatest mark in the league. The Herald praised his beautiful high marking. The Australian admired that Kazali marked amazingly and following a match against Essendon, the record reported his marking was one of the features of the game. At times, he seemed to hang in the air before getting the ball. This may have been no coincidence. Kazali attributed much of his amazing leap to what he called the art of breathing. He would fill his lungs before leaping for the ball, in the belief that oxygen gave him added levitation and energy. In 1925, he left South Melbourne for a season as playing coach at Wingup for a lucrative 12 pounds a game returning to the Bloods for two more seasons in 26 and 27, before leaving for the City Football Club in Launceston. Over the next few decades, Kazali would coach and play for teams across Victoria and Tasmania, managing to earn another five representative games for Tassie. He was also seen as a trailblazer for his fitness and training. His commitment to his health extended off the field, banning himself from alcohol, smoking and eating fried food. Because of this, he enjoyed a long career, playing over 400 senior games. In 1941, he played his final professional match for VFA Team Camberwell, aged 48, although there are reports he later participated in a Tasmanian veterans match at the age of 58. After finally hanging up the boots, Kazali continued to coach, including a brief stint at Hawthorne from 1942 to 1943, during which time the cry of up there Kazali could be heard rising from Australian soldiers on the front lines of the Second World War. He passed away aged 70 in October 1963 as a legend of Victorian and Tasmanian football, having been described as the greatest Australian footballer between the two world wars. His name was then forever immortalised in song by singer Mike Brady, and in 1996 he was inducted as one of the 12 inaugural legends in the Australian Football Hall of Fame.